when we first met, uh, like so many Catholic couples today, unfortunately, we were uh, we were not being chased in our relationship, and Andrea was using the pill for contraception. And I grew up Catholic and was a cradle Catholic, so I should have known better. But uh, I'm a pretty self-indulgent person, and uh, now I tend to sort of try to battle that tendency. But back then, it was I was indulging my indulgence. So if it felt good for me, it was good. At least that was what I thought. But I never even thought to like ask God or pray about it and think, you know, what is He calling us to and what would be good for our relationship. So the funny thing, the ironic thing about it is, it wasn't that great. A sex and Intimacy is supposed to be this great source of joy for newlywed couples and uh, an expression of your love for each other and it just wasn't. I mean, it wasn't that good. It was a lot of frustration emotionally for, for both of us and a lot of physical pain for Andrea. Yeah, my, that, a lot of that has to do with my history. I was not raised in a Christian or Catholic home at all. Um, I wasn't raised with good, healthy images of sexuality. and. You know, I had had a long history of partners and sexual behavior from an early age, and so a lot of that just compounded over years, and sex was not at all what it was designed to be by God in my life, and I knew nothing of God or, or what He called us to sexually or anything, so um, all of that impacted our relationship, physically and emotionally, I think, and even though we were very much in love, and I loved Brian and um, he was this wonderful man, the kind of man I never had been with before, someone who actually cared about me and you know, um, all those things that, like Brian said, this, this intimacy that was supposed to be so beautiful and good, which again is God's design, is not something, it wasn't like that at all for us. We weren't even approaching sex in, in that way, right? I mean, right. It was sex, it wasn't a renewal of any kind of covenant or, you know, renewing of our vows to each other or a recommitment. So. I was on the pill um, and it was about a year into our marriage and I really believe it was divine intervention. I believe it was God just finally calling us, you know. Um, it was literally like all of a sudden I just thought, I don't want to be on the pill anymore can't be good for me. I was, I was big into health and nutrition and things like that and I just thought to myself, you know this can't, I've been on the pill for 10 years, it can't be good for me physically. And That's the way to get to enter is the nutrition. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> God knew that much, right? <laughs> right. And so I said, I'm going to go off the pill. And we literally had no plan. And we were, you know, we were, of course we were open to having children, but we weren't, we weren't trying to conceive or anything like that at this point. We still weren't, you know, weren't actively um, seeking children. And so um, we had no plan. I was like, oh, well, uh, okay. And, but I was like, what, what are we going to do? And, you know, I wish I had, I went to Catholic schools for the first eight years of my life, and I wish I had known about it, but I didn't. And I was just like, well, I don't know what we're going to do. And, but I was okay with it. I was like, we'll figure something out. Right? Something will come down the pike, or we'll figure it out. Lo and behold, like that week in our church bulletin, there was an announcement for NFP classes. It was about, it was about two sentences. Yeah, about and, that but we noticed it. I mean, it's not like we read the bulletin verbatim, <laughs> and uh, and they were beginning that week. And she's like, right. "Let's do it." It was we the were, week that my pill was running out. Was the week that the class was starting. It literally was. You know, God was saying, "Okay." Yeah, it was awesome. Here you go. Yeah. And so we were intrigued, and we're like, "Well, we'll just check it out." We had no idea how many doors it would open for us and how much it would change our lives and our marriage and our intimacies. I loved it. I mean, yeah. for, for me, as a guy, it was just, it was efficient, it was straightforward, I understood the rules, and it was a system that you could work, and it made sense, and I felt confident in, in our teachers and in the information they shared that it would be effective. Um, Interestingly enough for me, I remember our teachers, and. They seemed so like pure and like here they were practicing and I thought they were these like super Catholics, you know, and and I just remember sitting there thinking, boy, I'm really not meant to be with, you know, I'm just like, I was thinking of my past and going like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know if she can relate to me or anything like that. And the funny thing is, is that I got to talking with her. Um, Later on, maybe even after we were done with our classes, I think it was when I was first got first pregnant or something like that, and we had a really intensely personal conversation, and her 
background was almost exactly like mine. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like I couldn't believe it because, and I think about that a lot when we're teaching, because I think here we're standing up in front of these couples and I, I know what they're thinking about me, or I think I can imagine what they're thinking about me, that, oh, here's this perfect Catholic couple and they do everything right. And that's why I like to tell our story to those couples, because it helps them to realize that, right. you know, we weren't always here. So, um, and, and she, my teacher was a good impetus for that for me. I realized that about how God can change people, you know, and, and that's what he did for me. Yeah, I would look at Andrea differently, or if I was thinking about, you know, if we were thinking about being intimate that evening or something, you'd have to approach it, or even at the moment, as, okay, this is a renewal of our marriage covenant, and, right, I'm supposed to enter into this loving act with my wife, and, um, there's a tendency, obviously, by men in today's society to just view women as an object for their own pleasure, and, um, I've obviously been guilty of that in the past, and, I mean, you still tend to fight those tendencies, but, uh, yeah, it opened my eyes to looking at it to her more as a gift from God and, and uh, I don't know how eloquent I'm being here but yeah it definitely changed my perspective on the, on the whole thing and on her and, and our union and what sex is for for me I have to say that um, even though it's been a long process and it's changed over the years there was a change immediately for me when I went off my birth control pills and I talk about this a lot when we're teaching um, what birth control pills do is they, they, they fool the body into this false sense of infertility. When you're infertile, you don't feel very sexual. <laughs> Women who've had babies know that right after the baby or, you know, um, it's just hormonal. Hormones, and God developed our hormones. And, and so when my, when my body got off this, this artificial form of infertility and, and I went back to this normal cycling, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, it sounds dorky and silly, but I felt like a woman again. Like, I really felt like a woman. And I felt like I was, and I didn't think about this intellectually in my head, but I felt like I was what God created me to be. And it was like, for me anyways, I felt sexual again. And I, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't think I realized that for 10 years I hadn't felt that way. Sex was just like a mechanical, I think, to me, which is probably why it was so uncomfortable physically, uh, not pleasurable necessarily. And, and so, you know, returning to that natural state for me was just really powerful. And, and like Brian said, you know, it's, it's been a progress over years, you know, and when, when we became teaching couples and really learned the theology of the body, that, that also shifted things, but it's just over a period of years, it's gotten more of a deeper and deeper understanding and appreciation for each other, and um, we pray before we have sex, which is like, and if we don't, it doesn't go so well. Sometimes we're like, oh, I forgot to pray, let's pray, you know? So it, it's just, it's, it's, all, it's all about inviting God into that union. After three, I remember I just had a meltdown one morning. I was like, we are done. I was like, we are, we're going to raise these guys and we're getting them out of the house. And, and we're totally done because we were feeling pretty full. And, we were uh, saying we'd have to turn in our teaching certificate. Yeah. <laughs> At the point in time, we were like, we're going to... But, you know, it was just probably a moment of weakness. And I, I remember making that comment, and it just sounded like so harsh coming out of my mouth. And But, you know, I was, I was pretty frustrated at the point. And uh, I remember thinking about it a couple weeks later and just being like, it just probably didn't sound too good. And, you know, for us, we've been blessed in so many ways um, in terms of careers and, and things that we need. And, so we started to sort of evaluate our reasons for, you know, why would we be done? And it, they weren't financial, they weren't uh, emotional or health or yeah, anything. It was strictly trying to like preserve like the last little bit of like me time or whatever. Like, well, if we have one more kid, I can't go surfing or working out or whatever I was doing at the time, which I don't get to do any of anymore. But <laughs> and that's totally fine. But um, it, it it was obvious that we were doing it for our own like. You know, yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I so then we opened up our hearts and we went for number four and we had this beautiful little girl and the first four were all girls and it was just this awesome little group of girls which we loved and 
Um, and I think even then we thought, okay, well, four is relatively generous and, and we were okay, but the beautiful thing about NFP is you don't close the door to any of it. And, uh, and while we sort of were maybe trying to be a little better on the abstinence part of it and we postpone, were. We yeah, were. we were. We, we were not trying to conceive him at right. all. <laughs> no, we weren't trying. We, we were rolling the dice then. We were blessed with, with one more and we have a little boy, obviously Dominic, and so it's been great. And uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. It, it, it's, uh, it has changed our perspective on family size though because it's, it's obviously easy to fall into what society says. And, you think you know, and I remember, three, maybe four, and yeah, I remember talking to um, after I'd already had. I think I was pregnant with Cecilia, our fourth at the time, and I felt like okay, this is the last time I'm doing this. This is the last time I'm getting pregnant. Last time I'm having a baby. Blah blah. blah. And I was talking to a woman who had five, and um, she said, "Oh yeah, I was I was done after four. I gave away all my stuff and everything." And she said, when she got pregnant with her fifth, that she cried, and I was like deal with that you know and she said you know you just don't you can't when we think of things in our own terms and we think of what we want and what's good for us we don't know we just don't know we don't God we don't know so many things that God knows and she said I, I look at my son now because she had one boy and three girls and um, she said I think of the relationship between my sons when they grow older that he has a brother now for life that he wouldn't have had. There just so many things that, you know, and, and I, I thought to myself, oh, that's an interesting way of seeing it. And then I started to sort of see my own kids because when we had our fourth, the just even the dynamics in our family, um, my two older daughters are super close, and then my third is kind of a third wheel always, and she just always feels left out. And having that fourth child that we kind of weren't planning on and we kind of didn't try for, it's been such a blessing for her. And then I think about him having, you know, a, a son, which he, he didn't really ask for or want necessarily, but probably, so there's just so many things that I think, like Brian said, it's the beauty of NFP is that when we try to do things our own way and we think we know better, just, again, people are missing out.